Welcome back geographers. How did Brazil's early people live? Early history. In 1493, Christopher Columbus returned to Spain with news of his explorations in the Americas. The Pope divided the new land between Spain and Portugal in 1494. Spain got a large portion of land. Portugal received just the eastern part of South America. When the Portuguese sailed to Brazil in 1500, they met peacefully with the indigenous, or native, people, who lived along the coast. The Portuguese commander, Pedro Cabal, claimed the land for Portugal. Many different native peoples had lived in Brazil for more than 10,000 years. By 1500, the population had grown to between 2 million and 6 million. There were four main language groups. Each group included many native peoples. One group of native people was the Tupi. They lived along the coast and in the rainforests south of the Amazon River. They grew cassava, corn, sweet potatoes, beans, and peanuts. They hunted fish and other water animals with arrows and harpoons from canoes. Other native groups included the Arawak and Carib people of the northern Amazon and coast. The Nambikuara group lived in the drier grasslands and highlands. Like the Tapi, Brazil's other lowland and rainforest peoples were mainly farmers. They lived in permanent villages and governed themselves. They used slash and burn agriculture. This is a method of farming in forests that involves cutting down trees and burning away the underbrush to create fields for growing crops. Farther south, most of the Nambikuara people were nomads who moved from place to place. In the dry season, they hunted, fished, and collected seeds, roots, and other parts of trees and plants. In the wet season, they built temporary villages and used slash and burn agriculture. The Portuguese created trading posts along the coast and collected Brazil wood. The red dye in this wood was valued in Europe, and it made Europeans interested in the region. Because of the trade, the Portuguese named the region Brazil. In 1533, Portugal's King John III created a permanent colony in Brazil. He wanted to maintain control of the area. Colonial rule. King John III gave his supporters land in Brazil that extended west from the coast about 150 miles, 241 kilometers, inland. In return, the people had to develop the land. To help with their workload, the colonists enslaved nearby native peoples. Many natives resisted and were killed. Thousands more died from European diseases they had no resistance to. In 1549, King John put Brazil under royal control. A new governor brought more colonists to Brazil, including Jesuit Catholic priests. King John wanted the priests to help the native peoples and to convert them to Christianity. Once converted, the natives were protected from slavery. Jesuits went into Brazil's interior to find more native peoples to convert and protect from slavery. Slave hunters, cattlemen, and prospectors soon followed, spreading development of the land. In the 1600s, large plantations grew sugarcane, mainly in the northeast. This pushed ranching westward. As other resources were discovered, new colonists arrived. Plantations boomed and development of the interior expanded. A number of important products and natural resources helped Brazil grow. Plantation agriculture and mining required large numbers of workers. When there were not enough native peoples to keep up with the work, the Portuguese began to import Africans. By 1820 there were 1.1 million enslaved people in Brazil, nearly one-third of the total population. Independent Brazil. In 1807, Napoleon invaded Portugal. The Portuguese ruler Dom João, the royal family, and other government leaders fled to Brazil. Rio de Janeiro became the capital, and Brazil changed from a colony into a kingdom. After Napoleon was defeated, Dom João's son Pedro stayed in Brazil as ruler. In 1822, Pedro declared independence for Brazil and crowned himself Emperor Pedro I. Brazil became a constitutional monarchy, a type of government with a king, queen, or an emperor as head of state. After years of harsh rule, Pedro I was forced from his throne. In 1840 his son Emperor Pedro II began his reign, which would last for 50 years. In 1850, Brazil stopped importing enslaved people from Africa. 
In the 1860s, a movement began to emancipate, or free, enslaved people in Brazil. By 1888, they all were free. Brazil's plantation owners did not like losing their enslaved workers. In 1889, they supported the army in overthrowing Pedro II. A new constitutional government was established. Brazil became a republic in which the head of state was elected. In this republic, the right to vote was limited to wealthy property owners. These wealthy voters came from the southeastern states. They elected the governors who controlled the presidential election. In turn, presidents followed economic policies that benefited southeastern Brazil where coffee was a major export. Over time, some people became unhappy with how the government favored coffee growers over other rich Brazilians. In 1930, Getúlio Vargas overthrew the coffee president and ruled as a dictator for 15 years. He became a hero by instituting many reforms. Manufacturing thrived under the presidents after 1950. But in 1964, unrest in the country caused military generals to take power. An elected legislature was allowed, but the army controlled the elections. The military gave up power in 1985. Today Brazil is a democratic republic. Voting is compulsory, which means citizens are required to vote. Because Brazil has a high number of well-supported political parties, coalition governments are common. A coalition government is one in which several political parties cooperate to do the work of a government.